Hello. It's Richard from Richard's Guitars. Um, okay, yeah, thanks for your feedback. Um, sorry about yesterday's disaster. Um, I have a fresh battery and I have memory in my, in my phone. Oh, it's not a phone, it's a, it's a camera. Um, it's a proper camera. Um, okay, based on your feedback, um, I figured that, um, I'll give you a quick update. It's quite nice that I wrote some of these down because there's so many things that are going on and I just didn't know where to start updating on about, updating about it. A lot of you have shown interest in the Lakestone guitars, which I'm really pleased uh, because obviously it's very special for me being homegrown in Wolverhampton, just down <coughs> the road. And um, they seem like a couple of special people who, um, I think it's going to be a really interesting story and um, I'm really excited to uh, learn more about it. Well, I've, since I spoke yesterday, I've been invited to go to their workshop on Friday. So I'm not going to say too much about that until I've been and, and, and seen the workshop myself and seen some work being done. And uh, yeah, they're going to show me some bending of sides. So I'm, I'm like a little boy in a candy shop at the moment. So uh, that couldn't be more exciting. So I won't mention that too much right now. Then you also mentioned the Davina guitars, which I just don't know why so many things are happening so uh, in such a short... Normally these developments would all happen spread out over maybe months or even years. And um, yet there is just so much that suddenly hit me. And um, it's not like I'm selling my soul and I'm suddenly looking for gear to sell. These things just organically occur through my own investigations and interest and people approach me. And, um, and thank you to Bryn Hiscox. Uh, um, uh, Hiscox cases. I hope I'm allowed to say that uh, because he actually mentioned me to uh, the guys at Lakestone. So a big shout out to Hiscox cases. Thank you so much. I'm uh, yeah, genuinely. I'm not messing around. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for putting us in touch. Hopefully that will lead to something uh, really nice. Um, so this is the things that sort of happened. And I think if you're like-minded, you find you know you find like-minded people, and uh, that's how this develops. So I'm not going to talk about, um, uh, oh yeah, sorry, Lakestone. So, so Davina guitars, um, this, the, it's another one that I want to talk to you about right now. You've mentioned you want to hear about it now, but I've got some samples coming in, the, potentially this week. And um, I'd like to say hello to Stan. Uh, Stan is the owner of uh, Davina guitars who approached me and also Sol. Um, um, uh, a chap who's been kind of a contact for them in the UK and he's been nothing but immensely supportive considering I haven't you know he's been telling me about Davina guitars for some time and just patiently patiently being very very understanding I'm always rushing around never probably get back to him when I try to um, but I but I've, I've sort of recognized how incredibly patient he's been and and, and just thoughtful about his way he deals with things. So, um, and, and because of his contact, this Davina thing has been sort of keeps propping up in my mind. So Sol, thank you so much for your input. And um, you've done credit to uh, Stan, who owns uh, Davina in uh, Slovakia. And um, I've had a email exchange with Stan, the owner of the business. And it is just fascinating. But I'm not going to talk about that either. Uh, because I'm not, I want to. I want to, but I'm not going to. Because I want to see the other guitars. And I want to talk to you about it. And I want to tell you about Stan and his wonderful insights into the industry uh, and guitar building. So these are lots of things to come. These are all like, I'm prepping you for things that are going to happen next. So... Uh, yeah, FGN, oh my god, you wanted to hear about FGN, uh, some of you did, uh, thank you, I'm glad that you're interested in that too, because that is insane, these guitars are utterly, utterly off the scale in quality, but I can't talk to you about that either, because I've got some of those coming in too, so I'm not going to talk about that today, because I just, there's no point in me talking about stuff in advance, well, I obviously asked you, but things keep developing every day and it makes certain things less sensical to talk about right now. Um, but I'm expecting something to come through from them very short and I'd like to have a guitar in my hand while I mention it. So, But please watch out for FGN. That's amazing. 
So I'm going to talk to you about one or two of you, a few of you definitely were interested in my mum and dad's nature reserve. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about guitars at all. I'm going to talk about my mummy and daddy. Um, the, um, no, it, there is a link in, there, there is a link. Um, I, so, okay, so I'll try and uh, interconnect, interweave everything. Um, I was brought up in an area between Stratford. I don't think my parents want to be absolutely, completely like throwing out their address, you know, to everywhere. But uh, between Stratford and Evesham, um, there was a, um, a railway line, so near to where I live now, and my, my parents still live where I was born, and uh, they built the house. And there was a stretch of railway line called the Stratford to Evesham Junction. That's the area of the of the Stratford Evesham Junction. Um, sorry, Stratford Warwick Junction. No, <laughs> I have to remember the initials. It's SMJ, so it's the Stratford Midland Junction. Otherwise, the Strat would look very silly because it'd be the wrong letters. Um, so it's SMJ, Stratford Midland Junction. So um, that's where they are. <laughs> that's where they live, and that's where the railway line went. Now, um, the, the railway line passed behind my parents' house and, my, and their neighbours. My neighbours owned it for many, many years, 30 years or so. Um, Eileen and Charlie, they were called. And they were a particularly lovely couple who brought, not brought me up, my parents brought me up next door. Um, but they uh, were like kind of, they felt to me like kind of extended grandparents. And, um, and um, something that's kind of relevant is my, um, Eileen, who used to walk me down the railway line, and there'll be all these kind of um, plants, which I can't tell you the name of, but you know when you blow on them, and the little fairies, I call them fairies, I still call them fairies, you blow on them, and all the fairies, and, and Eileen used to say that was the fairies, they were all fairies, sort of, uh, flying off and things, so she, was a, she said she was a white witch, so I lived next door to a witch, and um, she owned the railway line, and um, so, Unfortunately, clearly at some point they passed on and my parents were given the opportunity to buy the land uh, from them. So for the last 20 odd years they've owned this land and uh, in my dad's retirement and um, for the last 20 odd years he has been working literally daily tirelessly on a half a mile, three quarters of a mile stretch of land which is um as you might have seen you might have been on on, on walks and you know you quite often they they that they are ex railway lines so there's some embankments and there's some flatlands and you know and, and it, over the years it grew up and became very overgrown and as the as the hawthorns which used to line the, the embankments of the railway as they um got older and grew up and grew up, grew up they grew up and like created a whole canopy over the top of the railway line and then everything underneath dies so my dad's been working hard to sort of regenerate that land and, and, and make it um, like it used to be. And uh, the idea behind it is to totally, to, to, to show how the land can be regenerated, how, how um, nature and the wildlife can be brought back to spaces that uh, may otherwise be just ended up being farmland or, um, you know, dare I say, um, they left it to me in their will and I could have built a few houses on it and made lots of money. But no, they didn't do that. They gave it away to the charity. <laughs> um, so, um, so rather than looking cynical and angry about it, I thought I'd help them. Um, so um, the, um, yeah, I used to dream about that tennis court. Anyway, um, the, um, so the, 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 the idea was that um, they want to encourage all the the uh, the insects and butterflies and moth particularly moths and butterflies is a, lot, a big focus for my mom um, and they have these uh, butterfly guys that come round and my mom's all part of it and they literally document thousands of butterflies and moths on this stretch of land and uh, it, it is just insane what they've done it. They've now got two or three ponds um, on there. They've um, opened up the embankment and there's sunlight coming through um, to encourage a very specific um, habitat that encourages certain um, 
butterflies because it's a south facing embankment from where the railway line used to be. And I, I sort of think, well, my mum and dad are just doing this. They're just two people. And the change they've created and the legacy, if you like, that they've put in place for the future for people who I'm sure once, dare I mention, you know, they uh, move on to their uh, next, uh, uh, their next life, uh, haunting me maybe, um, they will just have this thing that is there in place and it will be passed on to the trust and it will continue to be cultivated and, and, and um, uh, ensured that the land remains protected. So they're getting, um, or they've got a status now, so it is a kind of reserve, a nature reserve status. So where do I come into all this? Well, I'm seen as the corporate um, um, <laughs> money-making businessman. No, you know, because my brother's always very, um, you know, he's always saving the planet and doing eco stuff, and uh, he's amazing at uh, what he does. My mom and dad are always fighting for, um, uh, you know, different uh, eco causes, and um, I just wanted to feel involved and, and give, do my part and not feel like I'm completely immersed in just trying to make money. Um, I shouldn't have to feel guilty. I have three children and they all need feeding. And I'm like you and I'm like everyone else. We all need to make money and all need to do something. And we shouldn't all feel guilty about trying to earn money. Um, but if I can earn money and I can do things in a way that makes me feel good, I've said it before, I just want to get out of bed and enjoy the process. So where does this link in? That was the bit, that was all the preemptive, that's all the ramble. Where are we going with this? You saw I did the Warsaw straps. The Warsaw straps were something I'm really proud of supporting, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the sort of skills in, in Warsaw. And I'll be popping over to Wolverhampton. Well, what I thought here we could do is we could have a cheaper, more affordable strap range. And um, the idea is moving on, in fact, it keeps moving, keeps developing, because uh, I do tend to overthink these things, but I, I'm, I'm really excited where it's going. The idea is some general uh, affordable range of straps that are cotton-based or, you know, various materials you can get straps out of. And um, it will be called SMJ. So there'll be SMJ straps, and the tagline is going to be support your guitar, protect your wildlife. Boom, boom. So that's that. So it's support your guitar, protect your wildlife. And it's, it's cool. It's all right. I like it. It's really, really cool. Um, and that'll be stamped onto every strap at the bottom. And every strap that you, will be named after a butterfly that you could find on their reserve. When you go to the website and look for the product, there will be a picture of the uh, butterfly that it's named after there will be an, ex an explanation of the habitat that it, it, it requires or it enjoys to thrive and giving you an idea of how you could encourage that butterfly to coexist with you at home <laughs> preferably in your garden uh, and um, so so yeah so it'll give you some tips on how to sort of um, sort of try and encourage that butterfly um, and one day it may land on your strap and <laughs> um, and the um, but I've kind of taken it another step. So we've got the straps, there'll be a pound for every, there'll be a donation, at least a pound. I want it to be at least a pound, I've got to, let's call it a pound. So a pound from every strap will go to um, the butterfly conservation. So that was a really important part of it, that, that there's some monetary value goes to the conserving uh, the butterflies. And uh, clearly there'll be also photographs of the nature reserve so what you'll do every strap is designed to raise awareness of the butterflies it will be telling you about the importance of the species and why moths and butterflies are so important in the ecosystem because they are really a, a very important kind of measuring stick for the health of the wildlife uh, without the butterflies and the, uh, and the grubs and things we can't feed the birds and then the birds don't die and then you know, the whole ecosystem starts falling apart. So it's a really important part of the ecosystem is the, is, is the health of the bugs and making sure, yeah, and then they turn into butterflies, uh, apparently. And um, so, so yeah, there'll be, so there'll be education, information, learning, um, and I'm hoping it'll just be a really inspiring project. I just think it's gonna be great, great fun. 
What I've done today, I've been speaking to a designer and I'm hoping I'm not biting off more than I can chew. I thought, well, yeah, I can buy these straps from, you know, obviously buy them in bulk um, from the Far East and wherever. But I've got it in my head that I want to now make the strap actually have characteristics of the butterfly it's made from. Or make, no, it's not, <laughs> it's not made from butterflies, but you know, the, the actual, uh, the actual uh, colorings and styling of it. And I'm absolutely sure we can do this because I've looked at the, um, all the different butterfly markings and they are beautiful, they're absolutely gorgeous. If you just Google butterfly and look at images, you'll see different color tones, there's blue ones and sort of denim ones and, um, you know, pat it's, it, there really is something there that, that works beautifully and, and I think could coexist really well with uh, a guitar uh, playing audience. So um, I've asked this designer to just try one and we're just going to try it. It was a peacock. I thought, it's got, oh, we'll use quite a striking uh, colour type, colour scheme and just see whether there's something that can still be really tasteful, really beautiful and still be an absolute, you know, it's still a guitar strap. It's nothing, it's not going to have butterflies all over it. It'll just look like a guitar strap. But if you know the butterfly, you go, oh, right, okay, that's great. I just thought it'd be nice just to connect it all up. So we have a butter, so the, the, even the strap will be kind of themed around the, the markings and colorings of the butterflies. Oh, and relax. What do you think of that? I hope you like it. I just wanna, it, it, I, I'm hoping you'll understand the significance of it all. And if nothing else, it's to just to pay tribute to the work my mom and dad are doing. Um, and, um, but I'm hoping people will, you know, buy into the significance of it and learn and help uh, educate themselves and others about the, about the butterflies. And um, let me know what you think. I hope you think it's okay, because I need you to buy them. I've got to, I've got to buy so many of them. <laughs> so I might have butterfly straps coming out my ears. Uh, and, um, but no, I think it'd be cool, you know. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So there you go, that's the F, um, Sorry, uh, SMJ straps. I'll keep you updated as it progresses, and um, I'll uh, I'll bring some. You know, oh please, um, if you look at my Facebook, which is Facebook forward slash Guitar Specialist, you'll see posts and updates on there that that will give you background, maybe photographs I can do of the nature reserve, and you know, there's other things you get to see that are going on. And also on my Instagram, so it's Instagram Richard's Guitars, I think. I think it's just Richard's Guitars. So please follow me on Instagram and Facebook because these different channels, if you like, they give me a different method of communicating different messages. Uh, and they're all relevant if you want to keep in touch. So, okay, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the eco bit done. And yes, that's a PRS, rather beautiful. So please let me know if you want that. That's my cheap plug uh, at the... Uh, um, for you. Uh, that will be on the website now. I think it might be on the website now, so check it out. Okay, thanks very much. Bye guys. Bye.